What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Games Up Podcast. My name is Cameron mcclellan Keeble, and you join me and Lewis for our ongoing coverage of E3 2017. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Excited. We're, uh, we're in the same room together for the first time since we came back from our kind of year-long hiatus thing. Yeah. Uh, so, And of course, we always get together for E3. This is what we do. So we are going to start with the first con- con- conference. The conference. first conference... From E3, which is EA, which has just finished as we're recording this, uh, we have all our live responses. First thoughts from you, Lewis, how did you feel it went for them? Um, it was an interesting one. I think there was some good. There was a good peak, and then uh, the rest of it I'm not so certain about. Um, some bits dragged on, This is This is really interesting. Where was the peak for you? Um, probably so at the announcement of this new game. Uh, oh right yeah 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 yeah, okay we'll get to yeah actually i was i was gonna say i don't think any of it peaked for me but actually now that you said that yeah that is a that is probably my peak as well so let's go through it chronologically as we do every year and ea decided to kick off e3 in the most e3 way possible uh with what just so much awkwardness uh they started with a drum band continuing the tradition of uh people starting with live music Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say continuing with the tradition of starting with something nobody asked for. But um, E3 is kind of weird because every year you get... So these conferences are like half to the consumer as a way of going, look what's pretty and you should be buying. And then half to their own um, stakeholders as a way of going, look how much influence we have and how much everyone wants our stuff. And like, so... Every year there's a bit of a battle between this is really awkward and just so unnecessary and this is really good and shiny. And here it just EA didn't strike the balance. So they started off with a drum thing. What are they called? A drum line. Yeah. They started off with like a, a, an American college drum line who came out to drum uh, the announcement of Madden. Um, and it was, firstly, if you're going to have a drum line on stage, please mic them up properly, because we <laughs> we heard it here as though we were like two auditoriums back in a crowd. Um, it was so stilted. Yeah, it um, definitely didn't add anything. Right, it, it didn't add anything at all, and I think that's actually a really good summary for EA's conference as a whole. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they started off with a drum line which advertised, was there to sort of shout about Madden. Uh, and the big thing about Madden this year is there's a Madden story. There's a really, there's a big push uh, for a story mode in Madden like there was in FIFA the year before. So it's kind of got a bit of an rpg light style. You play a character and you take them through this sporting journey approach to it. Yeah, and I love this. I, 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 I'm not a massive fan of these types of games, but I love this idea of it being like an RPG, of it being like I'm this character, um, I don't know. I, and and it's like the idea of kind of going through the game, being like you win some, lose some, and how it develops and how you develop, and I don't know. I, I I'm a big fan of that kind of idea. Um, yeah, I'm definitely for it. I mean, we said that like they had this approach for um, they had this approach for FIFA last year, and FIFA it looked awesome last year when they did it. I can't imagine it'll be any less awesome for Madden. I still don't think it makes me want to play these games. Like I'm not, I'm not chomping at the bit to pick either FIFA or Madden up to play this story mode. But I think if ever I was going to play a sports game or seek out a sports game, it would be a sports game like this. Uh, then we moved on from Madden to Battlefield One. So uh, the big reveal for Battlefield One this year was Battlefield One's "In the Name of the Czar" pack. Uh, which was kind of a reveal. We knew it was coming already. It had been leaked, I want to yeah. say. Um, I mean, we knew the name of it. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so that's quite a big leak. Uh, it, the name of it had been leaked online and uh, not much else really, but you could kind of extrapolate from it being called in the name of the Tsar that it was based around Russia and the Eastern Front, which is the case. is based around the... Uh, the colder, more kind of natural battles of uh, of Russia and the Eastern Front. Um, not entirely clear from the conference what it is. Yeah, there was, so there was quite a lot of hype by the um, by the announcer. You know, they, they, he kind of hyped it up as being very different and interesting. But I, it does seem to be probably a map pack. Yeah, yeah. Um, as opposed to like a major addition to anything. Um, from what we saw, there was nothing we saw that like confirmed or denied that, but. 
we didn't see much you know um so yeah yeah it it like the word that they kept using in this conference was innovative this is going to be the latest latest innovative addition to battlefield one or the latest innovative addition to this that the other and like it really undermined what they were actually showing because they were saying the next big innovation in battlefield one and you're like oh okay this you know it's about russian warfare something we haven't explored a great deal in games this could actually be kind of different and it just looks like it's a map pack i kind of feel like the way they presented this this time round a bit undermined um what they were actually presenting but yeah the the in the name of the czar pack uh, which is coming out, I believe, at the end of this year. Early next is when they said. Yeah. Kind of surprised that they didn't talk about what's next for Battlefield. Kind of surprised that they didn't mention that there's like, and we're working on the next installation, or and the team are is already looking forward to the future. It's very focused on these map packs. Maybe this game has a longer kind of life. Yeah, I than mean, usual. You have to look at it like they don't want you to think about the next game um, when they're selling you map packs. You know. Yeah, but they did for the others. Like Battlefield Four, we kind of immediately knew about Hardline. Even you know, as Hardline was finishing, they were revealing one. And I guess Battlefield One isn't finishing, so it's not really the same thing. But I'm kind of surprised that there wasn't some discussion about the team looking forward. I I think I'm I'm surprised in retro. I'm surprised at the time, but in retrospect, it makes sense that the game has more of a tail life. It was just at the time I was expecting there to be more of a more yeah. substance to what they were talking about. Yeah, I suppose that's not... Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. The final thing that they talked about uh, was a new competitive mode, which will be revealed at Gamescom, which, like, what the fuck? Mm. Why come to E3 and say, here is a thing we're going to announce at a different conference that's not as big as E3? Yeah. Like, I can't imagine you get audiences as big as this at Gamescom, and I, I get that there must be a push to be like, we need you to watch Gamescom too, but why not just leverage that audience for excitement now? If it's not ready, don't show it. Yeah, it's such a weird choice. I mean, especially when if if it's here, you've got the biggest audience possible. Right. Um, and it's not like we didn't have a few other places where it could have been. Um, yeah, yeah, that's very true. So this conference ran for 90 minutes and there were eight things talked about, really. Like, there were eight main focal points with maybe a couple of minimal reveals in each. Yeah, but I mean... Some of those they spent a lot more time on, and some of those they spent a lot less time on. I think, yeah, they they should have done something, or just not mention it. You know. <laughs> yeah, definitely, I totally agree. Uh, then the next thing that came up in the conference was the trailer for FIFA, uh, which um, uh, it was weird. It, there was like a very early glimpse trailer for FIFA, uh, which introduced a couple of online content creators onto the stage. And this played a huge amount into what EA's conference was. It was very YouTube. Like, it was very focused on YouTube creators presenting things to the audience rather than the other way around. It didn't want guys in sports jackets telling you about the game. It wanted people you care about telling you about the game. But it kind of didn't work. Um, I think, anyway, it didn't have the kind of polish you expect from an E3 conference because of that. Because the way that they make content is very different. Uh, but they came out and talked about uh, Alex Hunter, who was the main character of the story mode of FIFA 18. And then there was another trailer for FIFA 18, which revealed that the story mode this time around is going to focus on the same character, kind of making a return to the major pro scene. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it's cool to see them continue on with the story. It's cool that it was successful enough for them to carry yeah. on with it. And as you say, like, if there's any chance of us ever playing those games, that it will be through the story. Uh, angle yeah definitely um nice to see them carrying on with it didn't feel like it was huge like i didn't feel like it was i got anything particularly out of the reveal or out of the announcement but it's there and for people who like it it's there yeah yeah, yeah. uh the next thing was uh, a cut to another youtube content creator um and this is where stuff really went off the rails and i don't th really think it picked up much <laughs> from here so they cut to another content creator whose auto queue was very clearly broken uh, and they were talking about need for speed payback um but when he didn't have his script to read off of it became very improvised very yeah, it, was, stilted. it was very awkward <laughs> And as a result, it it felt much worse because he didn't know what to say about Need for Speed. and He didn't you know, know the name of it. 
He didn't know the name for it. <laughs> he didn't know really what to say about it. He barely knew the people who stood beside him. And I get that he must be nervous because it's E3. Mm. But really, you come to an E3 conference for polish. You come to an E3 conference for a reason to buy these things. And at no point did I feel like I was being sold a game. I felt like I was being like introduced to it by a friend who's a bit nervous about what it is. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so then the Need for Speed Payback trailer came up after a couple of minutes of discussion about what the game was. Um, it's super Fast and the Furious-y. Yeah. Like, there's a lot, there's a massive push for this to be kind of Hollywoody. Um, uh, big action set piece scenes, lots of big open road style battle, um, well, yeah, combat battle, yeah, car battle scenes. Um, and then big explosions, big, all of that. Mm-hmm. And a bit of an ensemble cast as well with the, uh, the people on the communicators in the back of the, who sort of switching between the perspectives of people doing different roles felt quite GTA ish. Yeah. Um, like one of the big things about GTA obviously was the GTA heist and switching between the perspectives and taking on multiple roles within the heist felt kind of like that where you were doing one thing first and switching to the next character, doing the next thing, switching to the final character. Um, I kind of like that idea. I don't really feel like I want another Need for Speed. <laughs> I don't know. Like, If this is the angle they're going with, then I would be probably quite interested in it. Um, one of the things that I didn't like about one of the latest Need for Speeds is they kind of ignored all of that side of things um, and didn't do anything story. It was, Or at least I think the story was climbed to the top of the list, but essentially it just was like, do these races. Right. I I much prefer the idea of bringing the, like the cops back for one thing, bringing the, um, you know the 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 chase and the story of it. So I like it. It looks like something that I could possibly be interested in, but I think I need to see a little bit more. Okay. One okay. of the, one of the interesting things though is this was a a gameplay trailer, um, and not a CG trailer actually, um, mm-hmm. which seems to be something they're kind of focusing on actually, is that we haven't seen during you know during this actual um conference we didn't really see much of a lot much cinematic um but lots of gameplay which is maybe what they're going for yeah yeah very true and rightfully so i think like we've had yeah and and i think rightfully so um cg trailers are a a really divisive thing within the industry because they're more about setting tone than about actually revealing what a product is and how it plays and how it looks um, and yeah, it was nice to, to see EA have a much more honest approach here, even if what they were approaching was kind of less substantial than I think we wanted it to be. Yeah, um, they definitely could have showed more. Um, I think as well in this case, like, hopefully we'll see more before it kind of comes out, because at the moment it's kind of, it was it was cool and interesting, but we don't really know if it has any more substance to it. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely. You know, and ideally it would have a little bit more depth than Fast and Furious. <laughs> Yeah, no, you that's know. that's true, um, and it didn't really show a variety of anything. Like it was, it was. Yeah, true. There was a discussion about customization, and there was a discussion about kind of making the game and the car your own. But it didn't talk about how that applies to the gameplay. It didn't talk about what that is outside of the the story, which in this case was just one scene from it. Like this, the trailer felt more like a demo that should have then come with another trailer to make you understand what the wider yeah. context of the game is. Yeah, and I think, like, it could have been hands on a little bit better, I do think. I, I agree with that. Um, and I think maybe, like, the scene was cool, but I think hopefully there's better stuff in it. I don't know, like, it kind of fell flat, to be honest. The um, The cool action scene, though it was, it still kind of didn't really feel that good. Yeah, it it was a victim of the the undermining presentation it had been given beforehand. Like there was a there was a lot of build up and then it kind of flopped and it tried to build up again, but it never really got there. If it had if it had had the momentum they'd wanted it to, clearly from the way that the conference was structured, you can understand. But it, it really struggled to get back off the peak once it had fallen from it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we now come to my. My yeah. peak of the conference. And, and my peak too. And that peak is uh, A Way Out, which is a new... I guess it's an indie game, but it feels kind of weird to call it an indie game. Yeah, so it was. it's made, It's from the person who made Brother A Tale of Two Sons. Yeah. Uh, say it? Yeah. Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. Okay, so it's from the guy that made uh, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. He's made a proper... He's making a proper studio now by the sound of it, so... Hayes Light Studios. I guess we're not quite... We're kind of in, on the mid ground between indie and 
getting more up there and being more... Yeah, like, in this situation, this is an independent studio, but they're being bolstered up by EA. So, like, yeah. it's not an independent game because it's it's on EA's payroll, but it is an in- it's kind of weird in the way that indies have, have made their way into the industry in that regard. Um, but what it is is a co-op game which is strictly co-op. It can't not be played co-op. Uh, which is about escaping from a prison. Uh, and then as far as we could tell, we didn't really see a great deal of, of detail outside of that. There was a couple of hints as to what be, could be going on in the story. But um, it seems to be about escaping from a prison and kind of re-establishing yourself in the world and surviving yeah. in the world. Because, I mean, it had, like, there was a big, a big thing that the, the developer said is that it's only the start. Escaping the prison isn't the end of the story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it looked really cool, and I, I like the idea that we can kind of, you know, um, because of the split, the way that the split screen is done is that even if you're playing online, you see the other person's screen. Right. Um, so it's kind of like a faked version of couch co-op in that Yeah. it will be like having the other person's part of the screen there when they're not there beside you. But the really cool thing that I think that, that does is it means that, you know, you don't have to communicate with the other person to mm. do plans, you know, like you can see the other person prepare something and you can go, oh, cool, over there. Now... I've got some uh, some theories already about how the story is going to play out. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it would be really cool if the end was like a fight. You know, it's kind of like the oh, whole thing shit. builds to you escaping, but then like something happens, big fight. I don't know. I, I could see it happening, and you end up being against the person that you played the entire game with. So I got a totally different vibe right. from this. I got a very, um... <sighs> you know how indie games. Tem- tend to have a thing where they have like a tight focus and then they get kind of wanky and meta and it's arty. all imaginary it was someone's yeah. dream well or like it or it's like <laughs> the it's about um, life yeah. yeah like i got that from this i think that you it, it's not go- the ending is not going to be anywhere near what the rest of the game is and it will be an opening to the next thing and, a, and a whatever okay um I have a couple of wonderings about this game, specifically how you're going to play it. So what we saw was a lot of... It it looked very Shawshank Redemption-ish. Yeah. Like two kind of working class style characters trying to establish themselves as as skillful people within this prison to work their way out and and, and beat the system, as it were, within that prison, at least because they were put in prison in the first place. But like... um, in that sense, I have a question of like, is it open world or sandboxy and you plan your heists like that? Yeah. How do you struck like is it linear I know, I and think you play through chapters? The way it- the way that it was said um is that each section is section is open and there's different ways through each section, so it does sound like it's gonna be slightly more linear. Um I can't I can't remember the exact wording he gave, but it was that um there are different ways through different So like parts. so kind of like cha- sandboxy chapters. Yeah, something like okay. um, like Hitman, like in that game, you know. You right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hitman so Absolution. scenarios. Yeah. Okay. I yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes the game opens up. Sometimes it's fairly linear, but you kind of progress through a story. I think that's probably quite likely, especially because the story angle. You know, um, I'm not a, ma- a massive fan of open world story. Um, I think having linear sections helps. Um, and it did kind of look like this. This is going that way. Mm. Um, but yeah I, think, I don't know the interesting thing with this one and I think the really interesting thing with this one um, is ultimately that if this has got an online multiplayer mode which we know it does is the game going to be have a replayable factor into it because ultimately I think it has to if that's the angle it goes for you know I mean it's <sighs> There are very few games that don't because it's it's kind of industry suicide to not build in a way to make people well, want I, to I come back and play again. I don't know. I mean, it depends what it is. I mean, like a game like so I'm fine with playing like Uncharted once, you know. Yeah. Um, and this, you know, as I said, actually doing it, it's got a big, big, heavy story feel um, from what we saw. But then big stories don't tend to actually be something you want to jump back on so i don't see it having a big online playing you know unless it's literally like multiplayer in the sense that you already know the other person so you say you're fine with playing through uncharted once and that is true but the industry wants you to buy it on day one and are you okay paying 60 60 pounds 60 dollars to play through it once 
Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because the average consumer, I would argue, is less so. And that's why you saw the rise of baked-in multiplayer. That's why you saw the rise of yeah, New true. Game Plus, so on and so forth. So this game, I'm going to predict, mid E3 predictions, predictions, uh, I'm going to predict that what happens here is you complete a chapter, you get through to the next objective, and then the game opens up a sort of challenge mode. And there's like leaderboards, okay. but dual leaderboards, so you can compete with a friend and then another friend and see who does it better. Yeah, I could see that. Each other. I could see that, actually. Um, and I guess all, there's always going to be some replayability in like the swapping characters kind of sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's only because obviously what they need is if there is going to be... Like, we're not quite... You know, it's not quite certain that it's going to be like an open online multiplayer. It could be like a... I see you on Xbox playing it and I've on my Xbox and I click on you and yeah you know we we, we join together it might yeah, not it's, necessarily it's not be necessarily like um I can connect to a random person yeah it it's not necessarily like uh what's the word synchronous multiplayer it could be asynchronous yeah is that right yeah. I think so. Uh, so then from a way out, we moved on to... Uh, we went to a second away out trailer, uh, which you mentioned looked very Uncharted. Yeah. Um, when but, it opened up and into the woods, it kind of looked very much like they were going for an Uncharted angle, combining it with, like, story. Mm. And there was also quite um, Uncharted-ish style platforming. Yeah. Like, uh, un- very cinematic kind of jumps and slow motion and holding out hands and all that kind of stereotypical Uncharted Tomb Raider-y stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then from A Way Out, we got the second of the unannounced IPs that was rumoured going into the conference. So we knew they were talking about eight things. We knew there were six games announced. Very similar to Bethesda, ironically. Uh, and we got the second announcement, which was Anthem. And we didn't really see much of it. Anthem was about a 15-second trailer, which was about a wall uh, which separates people from monsters and there's worse stuff outside. The w- it, it's very, very bland what it was. <laughs> the interesting thing, though, is Anthem looks hugely like Titanfall. Yeah, so we saw in the trailer some sort of mech or some sort of suit, at least. I'm not too sure. Um and also, yeah, it, it looked like it was following a similar scheme to Titanfall, so maybe. And, yeah, and there's been some some digging done afterwards, and like the font looks, and it really? seems silly to narrow it down to something the like the font, but actually, it all fits into the style of Titanfall. Like the lighting on people's helmets on their faces looked like a Titanfall pilot. When Titanfall Two was announced, they they talked about making the game. And the story of the game wider than just Titanfall. They said they were planning other kind of media properties and they were, you know, talking about TV series and things like this. I think Anthem is a Titanfall game. Yeah. Or at least I think it's the story mode of a Titanfall game. So I think it is... uh, That sounded not as I mean it to. Like, I think this is a separate game that is in the Titanfall universe. I think this is Titanfall Anthem just without the Titanfall bit. Um, The rumour and the trailer for it is that it looks very Destiny-ish. Well, actually, so... um, One of the things that we've we've heard or rumoured is that they've taken lots of elements of Destiny and Division. Right. Um, So I would go as far to suggest that potentially it's an MMO. So a Titanfall MMO. Potentially. That... Sounds. And it, and it is you know it is Bioware who have made an MMO before for Star Wars, yeah. So true. it's it's entirely possible. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, I I would enjoy it. Um, yeah, I do, I think it's 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 definitely a possibility, and it is a pretty cool world to explore. Right. Um, hopefully, we can be evil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I I would certainly choose to be on the. Uh, South African guy side. <laughs> but he's so bad. Like, not not in an evil sense, like in a voice acting sense. Uh, yeah, a Titanfall MMO sounds awesome. And I'm really glad to see that Titanfall is not A, dead, especially after the sales of Titanfall 2, and B, not just limited to multiplayer games. I'm glad that this has legs as a franchise wider than... Um, just Titanfall 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. I'm glad that this is something that is going to live on in other ways and may find better success in other ways. Yeah, and I think, just quickly on it, I no, think... No, no, go for it. I think, um, 
one of the things that also maybe drives it towards being an MMO as opposed to something story-wise, like you were saying, yeah, um, is the fact that we didn't get like a faced character. Um, oh, okay. You know, we we got like very much a faceless character and very much like a generic. Now, I would make the counterpoint that actually that would play more into Bioware's hands, considering the way that they've made the previous Dragon Age games and Mass Effect. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's true. So I heard rumours before today that this is an RPG. Mm. Um, The rumour had been going around. This was codenamed Dylan before it was called Anthem. And the reason being was because Bioware wanted to make the Bob Dylan of video games. By which they mean that when people refer to a video game, they wanted them to think of them as a trendsetter. They wanted Anthem to be something that defined games like Dylan did for music. Utterly stupid. Let's just put that out there. Because that's never how those things work. The Last of Us was not designed to be the godfather of video games, but it's considered that. Yeah, exactly. And I think, like, going out with that angle is a little bit... Facetious. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. However, also, quickly, if they are going out with that angle, applying it to a franchise doesn't make any sense. Well, the the other thing I think you've got to consider is that if that's an angle that you go for... Is there not a worry that you kind of start going like, this is cool, let's put it in, just for everything? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no constraints on what the game is and can be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have heard rumours that this is an RPG, or it was an RPG at some point. Um, What it means and is now, we're yet to be seen. The major gameplay reveal apparently comes at the Xbox conference tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to put a big old Smackdown prediction on this. This is an Xbox exclusive. Oh, really? So we did a bit of research and looked at the Anthem, the game website, and there's no mention of platforms. There's no specific logos shown, uh, but there is a little um, sort of, well, what would you call it? Um, a disclaimer at the end of the trailer that says 4K resolution not available on all platforms. So very quickly going back on that prediction, probably not an Xbox One exclusive, but... <sighs> The other thing, looking through the trailer as well, is I don't know whether this is a Titanfall game. <laughs> it yeah, I mean, you start you started like, watching it with me and going, oh, Titanfall, look, it's definitely Titanfall. But then towards the end, it's like, if it were Titanfall, like, the trailer looks so Titanfall. It looks so Titanfall. If it weren't Titanfall, like, if, if it is, why not just say it? Because the trailer is so obvious. And if it's yeah. not Titanfall... May their marketing team rest in peace. Because what the fuck? Like, it looks... The, even the reveal of the title looks so similar in style to Titanfall. Why would you ever put your games so closely together like that? Maybe just because they want to make it such a separate thing. You know, same universe, but a very separate game. Yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe. You know, this isn't... They want to make it clear this isn't like Titanfall 3. Like the cinematic universe kind of thing. Yeah, like this isn't Titanfall 3. This isn't the next Titanfall game it's a completely separate thing you know uh I don't know uh so then we went from that onto NBA uh NBA was kind of weird because NBA revealed a um a kind of story trailer but it didn't seem as focused as FIFA and Madden um where we where FIFA and Madden have like a very clear story you are this character and you're going through these achievements NBA focused more on like you can take out you are this character and you play in major games across their lifetime and and major games across the course of basketball but you choose to do it on the streets or you choose to do it in the courts or you choose to do it like it it felt more like a choosing a path system than an actual story yeah yeah it did which is weird i think because I remember NBA last year having a big thing about having a story trailer. It was a Spike Lee story, if I remember rightly. Um, and it's weird that it's the only... Like, NBA is one of the better selling games in sports that they have, as far as I understand it. Like, NBA is a surefire top of the top of the MPD sellings every year. And it's weird that it would not have the same focus as it did last time maybe last time it didn't work yeah yeah it's definitely a possibility i mean it does seem like you say that they've kind of pulled back the focus of the story mm. Mm. so from nba uh we went to a big massive reveal of star wars battlefield 2 battlefront 2 pardon me 
which began with the John Boyega tweet, which was, hey, EA, is this ever going to have a story mode? And then it was flanked by masses and thousands of millions of, <laughs> hey, EA, is this going to have a story mode? And then they revealed multiplayer. Yeah. Which is like, why do that? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really strange, actually. they they You're right. They pulled this big, will it have a story mode thing? And they didn't really take it anywhere. Right, like... Then they brought on the actress for Iden Versio, who is the main character in the story mode. Yeah. Um, and she, firstly, she was awesome. She was so personable, so clearly excited to be there. She yeah. was like, it was really like the the whole conference up to that point, especially the presenters, had been really stilted, really nervous about enjoying it. And you could tell she just went out there and was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm on the front of an E3 <laughs> conference. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's good to see that kind of excitement. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so they did reveal when the story was going to take place. It's going to be in between uh, Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. Bridging that gap a bit from the, you know, the um, kind of like when, when the new series died and what's kind of going on in between. Um, should be interesting. Yeah. I think that's, it's an interesting like period because, you know, we still have to see this like return of, of the, the uh, Mac. yeah <laughs> yeah it it seems like this is going to bridge the gap somewhat between the fall of the empire and the the rise of the first order in terms of star wars canon we we knew that this was taking place then roughly it was it was fairly easy to piece it together because we saw bits of the new movies and we saw bits of the the original trilogy so you could kind of piece it together but yeah they uh, they kind of actually nailed the flag down yeah as to when it was then and would, then they sorry after you i always um i'm always iffy about playing stories in between um ser- in between series i guess because it's like you know we're not winning this one or like <laughs> like <laughs> you know or i suppose though i guess we'll be playing on the dark side yeah and and i think the other thing is with with star wars there's enough planets and enough characters and enough species to actually have a like they could win this one and it just plays into the wider thing of star wars like it's yeah. not it's not like you're playing ray's parents yeah and like and you know where ray's story goes you're playing an unnamed soldier until you find out her name Iden versio but you know what i mean um who will play an unnamed role in an unnamed conflict that may play into star wars in a larger part there is still a bit more wiggle room there as to what can actually be done um, and actually, I think this could make a lot of sense if there's some kind of connection to, you know, maybe Iden Versio is vital to something that happened in The Force Awakens already, but it's not like a big conclusion. It's just a piece of the timeline. It's building that, that franchise. Yeah. So from that, we then went on to a big uh, multiplayer, ex- uh, a big multiplayer battle. They switched over to I Justine uh, and a shoutcaster. Uh, and I believe another YouTuber called Golden Boy, who talked over a multiplayer battle, which was three stages. It was set in Naboo's Thede, uh, and it was the droids are attacking Thede. They try to get into the palace, and when they're in the palace, they try and capture the throne room. First thing to mention about all of this is that it was presented live, as though it were live, uh, but the gameplay was pre-recorded. So there were some really weird moments where, like, over the course of the last few E3s, we've seen little technical hitches, um, like that time the Uncharted demo stopped working, the time yeah. the Call of Duty demo skipped on Microsoft stage, and lots of companies have got the hang of doing them fakely to make it all look real. You reckon? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I know. Yeah? Like, I know. Um, <laughs> that, that has happened. Um, there are lots of companies who will present a little bit of shit-looking footage so that the rest of it looks better. And you, at the time, were like, why would they pick this footage of this guy just walking around the battlefield? Actually, because that represents what the campaign is. Not the campaign. That represents what playing it is. Yeah, that's true. So, like, those 30 seconds of downtime make the rest rest of the five minutes of Darth Maul look much better. Yeah, I can see that. So, um... It's kind of a shame that that happened. I understand you understand why they have to do um, non, why they have to do non-live multiplayer stuff because there's a there's a threat that it could go wrong at any second. 
They probably don't have like proper servers up to do this kind of stuff. They probably don't have proper servers up that you can co- remotely connect to from E3 in Los Angeles. Like, yeah. There's all sorts of technical stuff that goes into this. But um, it would be nice if it were made clear that it's pre-recorded. Yeah. Uh, so we saw the uh, the multiplayer battle. It looked... Uh, I think we'll, we'll deep dive into our thoughts on it. Just before that, there was the announcement of uh, Finn and Captain Phasma coming into Battlefront 2. And that was where they announced that all DLC will be free. I think we're going to see them go down the Overwatch model here. Where yeah. Heroes and Maps come out a few times a year and they are free... And you can purchase something else if you want to. I don't really know what they're going to sell. Like, if it seems a bit disingenuous if they're going to sell star cards because that's quite literally the abilities in the game. Yeah, so, but I wouldn't put it beyond. I like, wouldn't I, I've either. seen it. You know, we've seen it being done with other games, so it's possible. Yeah, like the reason the Overwatch model works is because Blizzard can make ten skins for Sombra. Because Sombra is their own character, so they have the license to play with what she looks like. You can't yeah, make like a skin for Darth Maul because we know who Darth Maul is. Yeah, that is actually a fair point. Um, yeah, that is a fair point actually. But I guess they can. You know, the world's got a lot of characters. I think there's a fair chance they can bring more in. Um, you know, like the people that were uh, talking about it on the actual the live commentary that wasn't live, I guess. Um, we're talking about playing as uh, the C three PO on the droid head. You know the uh, the, the oh, you know when he got when he gets put yeah when he it. got yeah, head swapped yeah. with the um, with the droid and then we were we we watched him fight. That kind of thing could be done. Yeah, so I guess they could extrapolate little moments from the films and sell them. You know, you can have you can have Django Fett and Boba Fett. You yeah, know, things things that are fairly easy you can to have change. Mask plus Django, Django with a mask. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. That I kind guess of thing so. could be done. So my question to you is, what did you think of the the battle? F- the, the fuck. What did you <laughs> think of the battlefront? Um, yeah, the it game looked, itself. It looked quite good. Um, I quite liked it actually. I, I like that they're doing classes a bit more, um, pushing to kind of things being a little bit different. Um, I like that a little bit because I don't really like. I don't really like the combat of sort of Call of Duty maybe where everyone's just one grunt or everyone's just one thing I like the idea of having a bit more ingenuity a bit difference between classes mm. um, so that looked good I, I like that they've got um, you know uh, space or I guess air combat happening at the same time as ground combat um, as well as like tanks and walkers and all of this going on. Um, mm-hmm. I like that big mix that they're kind of doing. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of stuff I like. It's it's very Battlefield and obviously, um, you know, that's how it came about in the first place. So it's very much drawing on that angle. Um, hopefully, I, 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 I actually much prefer kind of attrition mode as opposed to kind of, um, you know, like the, the way that we, the one that they showed us here was kind of almost capture the flaggy. You know, it's kind of like, um, not capture the flag. Like a uh, objective based, you know? yeah, yeah. Like capture points rather yeah. than yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of kind of the traditional attrition mode. So I I went into this press conference really excited for Battlefront Two. Yeah, and I'm not quite as excited now. I, um, so just just I know I, mean, I don't know what you're gonna say. But no, I mean, like, no, go for it. Speaking. Um, in general like this didn't really feel like a big push towards it actually mm. you know um the thing they did with battlefield last year was trying well actually oh well, maybe not the thing they did at first with battlefield was trying to get it away get out of the way quickly and show the cool stuff yeah admittedly then they did like a big long multiplayer match um no but i i know what you mean and it does speak to the way ea handled this conference was the battlefield one trailer when we first saw it had like it was a it was a highlights reel, right? Like it was yeah. all the best stuff in Battlefield One. Where here it was, here is a demo. the The EA's press conference was lots of demos, yeah, and it really actually needed a, a few trailers that had a bit less focus to get you excited for this. Yeah, because that yeah, that's exactly the thing. So I mean, um, like even the trailer that they showed for Battlefront Two was uh, like was fifty percent Naboo. Which is like it's great, but we get it. Naboo's in this game, wow. and I know it's 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 really like entitled of us to sit here after the game's been revealed. Like years ago, we complained, "Oh, is there original trilogy stuff in it?" And now we're, there's original trilogy stuff, and we're like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> but like, 
what I want to see is everything. And yeah, that's very entitled and very particular. But like E3 is the place where you kind of expect to be taken for granted a bit, right? Yeah. Everything has to be a bit more glitzy, a bit more glam, and we'll take the, you know, the reality afterwards. Whereas this was reality. I'm like, I don't need EA to show (laughs) me a Battlefront multiplayer match. I need them to sell me to want that. Yeah, I can I can see exactly where you're coming from. And the big thing here is that they just I think they didn't push it enough in kind of show how exciting it was and how like we can see a real game that's great, but I want to see the glitz and the glam. I want to see I want to see them show me like a highlight reel where they just show like a different planet and a different situation and a different um, right. thing for every like shot, like, you know. With EA what really happened over the press of course of this press conference was kind of two reveals. Like, two major reveals, and the rest of it we knew. And, like, okay, Naboo is in this game, and that's amazing, and it looked awesome. Yeah, but also, like, but it like, didn't look amazingly different, I guess, is one of the big things as well. well uh, I mean, I think sorry, it, there's difference there. I'm not saying there isn't, but I mean, like... I know what you when, mean, like... When after, it's not majorly different, then it's not enough to kind of make me go... After a massive revolutionary step, when it doesn't look as revolutionary yeah. the second time. I know what you mean, but, like... I don't know, like, I don't need to see 30 minutes of the same multiplayer mode if you haven't shown me two or three minutes of everything different. Like, there were a lot of maps revealed in that trailer, but I I don't know, it just, it felt slow, and it felt far too slow for a conference. PlayStation have ruined E3 to some extent, because they've set this, this tone where they just go, big hitter, next two minutes, big hitter, next yeah. two minutes... And really, EA <laughs> are the ones lagging behind the most. Because Microsoft have been able to catch up to some extent. Nintendo do things totally fucking differently. <laughs> Ubisoft have caught up to some extent. Yeah, EA actually, last still year. still trying to do something different. And, like, being blunt, EA, it's not working. Like, if you're doing something that's not E3, do it not at E3. Don't, like, this is an E3 press conference. And they'll call it EA Play as much as they want. But it's an E3 press conference. And if it weren't an E3 press conference, we wouldn't be here sat watching it. Yeah. Like, buy a theatre. Not buy a theatre. Hire a theatre. Buy a theatre. Hire a theatre. Go to E3. Give us the glitz and the glam that we want. You know, I know that EA has a problem with perception and the way that it's it's talked about, but it doesn't come from these press conferences. It comes in the way it releases its games. Give us the glitz and glamour on these days and be a more honest company when the games come out. I think... One of the big things they could have done as well with um, Battlefront 2 is start off by going like, this is what it's starting in the game. This is what's starting. This is what it launches with. Yeah. Because one of the big problems with Battlefront 1 is that it didn't launch with enough content and people got angry about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I, I don't, I, I think that they fixed it later on with DLC and that. But when it started, like, there wasn't all of the modes unlocked. There wasn't all of the maps. There wasn't that many maps. Yeah. You know, they could have done with just going it's launching with 12 maps you know right right you know all and of the be, modes are going to be there and to give them their credit it looks like it's launching with loads more mm. like i should i don't know what it is about the way that they presented it this time but everything about what they said i should love and i just i will and i will probably get this and probably enjoy it just as much but i don't have the same excitement and the same kind of buzzy childish hype that I did coming in for this. I think the I've... problem for me particularly is that it looked like Battlefront 1. Yeah, so this is kind of what I was saying, is that, like, ultimately, when you release, like, a sequel, especially a game which, in theory, like, they could add this content to Battlefront 1. Right. You know, like, so what is it that's different about this that makes it have to be a new game, you know? Right, exactly. This could easily be... And, like, again... We're talking out of our asses. We don't design games. We have no idea what goes into the difficulties of making this. And there's probably a whole bunch of systems that make it different. Yeah, and it, it is possible that, you know, there's something that prevents certain things from actually being in well, the game and it seems without like they've changed the code. Right, and it seems like they've changed the infrastructure of how you get into the game, how you control the game, so on and so forth in terms of loadouts and things. So we are talking shit to some extent, but like, yeah, you're right. Why are they building an entirely new game to put in what seems like it could be put in in this one. Yeah, like, exactly. If the big problem they faced is content, here's the content. Yeah. Why like, is it being in something else? Well, this is the thing. So, I mean, you know, you have to look at it as well. Like, if you can add the space combat properly into Battlefront 1, 
Right. That's like a major change of the game. Is it not possible to add other content to Battlefront yeah. 1? Yeah. You know, um, so like... As, I mean, let's be honest. It It's going to be, to some extent, an attempt to get away from Battlefront 1. Yeah, see, this is kind of what I was thinking, is that ultimately... No, I mean, I say that too much. <laughs> I think one of the things that they've done is that because Battlefront 1 maybe didn't do as well as they wanted it to, mm -hmm. this is them going... We didn't really want to do a Battlefront 2, but here's Battlefront 2, so that now we can add this in. Right, and when enough people get behind it, because we've been listening, we've been making changes, then it can just be the Battlefront everyone wanted from day yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I, maybe that's not quite fair, but I think, like, at the moment it's tough to see why else, you know? At the moment it's tough to see because we haven't seen enough. Yeah. I hope... I get the feeling, just like last year, that this is the most cynical we're going to be at E3 this year. I don't know what it is. EA haven't delivered particularly good E3 conferences for the last couple of years. And I hope next year it's just different, but I get the feeling it won't be. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, there was some really cool stuff here. A Way Out looks amazing. I am so fucking excited for what Anthem is, especially if it's a Titanfall game. He's hoping we hear about it again. <laughs> well, we're, hear we're hearing about it from Microsoft tomorrow. Oh, yeah. That's confirmed. So, oh, okay. Um, and... And there's a lot of stuff here that I will be excited for by the time it comes out. I, I still can't wait to get my hands on Battlefront 2. I'm just less likely to be buying it day one now. Yeah, but I, I reckon you might not be in the wrong there. Like, I've got a bit of a suspicion that Battlefront 2 is going to uh, follow a similar kind of path of like map packs. and. It, it might be more Battlefront 1.5. I reckon that it's not going to launch with that much content. Oh, yeah. really? I reckon that their whole thing of it being like the hot, all of the games, all of the series, and that's... That's going to be like a long path of DLC. Mm -hmm. Free DLC, but DLC nonetheless. Okay. You know, um, and that's their way of doing Overwatch. It's not going to necessarily be new skins as much as it's going to be oh, okay, a shit. new map every month. So, but what I mean by the Overwatch stuff is, I mean the Overwatch model in terms of free DLC, but monetized oh, yeah, yeah. I know. visuals. So the question is, what do they monetize? But I get what you mean in terms of like a much longer shelf life in terms of its DLC. Release. Yeah. So it really, you know, like we could have it releases. It, it starts with three maps, but then next month it's got another map and next month it's got another map. And right. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. kind of what I'm seeing because especially when their focus on the, the on this was, um, you know, a, one, a, a, map. A, one map, a map that we knew about mm. and also the stuff that we'd seen in the trailers. Yeah. True. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our reactions, our response, and to some extent our review of EA's E3 2017 conference. If you liked it, what we'd love you to do is please consider liking the show if you are on YouTube because it means that we know that we're doing good stuff, which is really helpful, and it helps us get in front of a few more people, which we'd really appreciate. Especially come and like it on Facebook because we've actually been having a few more people find us out uh, and like us sort of organically and that's really nice it means that we are doing stuff right so we'd love your support if you're on itunes and you're hearing this at any point um that means we bought an rss feed which is awesome uh you probably won't be hearing it fresh at the time because we can't afford one yet and we're really sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that was ea at e3 2017 please find our facebook please subscribe to the show no matter what you're on adios and the game's up <laughs>